it has never been an economic project. It's always been a political project, and the politics of it haven't changed. This is a way for Germany to basically take over Europe, reshape the European economy on the German model without firing a shot, something Germany has always wanted. The key is to lower the unit labor costs. This is about cost. German domination in German, dom German domination via an economic model imposed on the periphery. And we are now living, we are now living in a German dominated Europe. Something that the European project was actually supposed to stop. Something that those that went before us actually paid a heavy price in blood to prevent. I don't want to live in a German dominated Europe and nor do the citizens of Europe. But you guys have played a role. Because when Mr. Papandreou got up and used the word referendum, or Mr. Wren, you described it as a breach of confidence, and your friends here got together like a pack of hyenas, rounded on Papandreou, had him removed and replaced by a puppet government. What an absolutely disgusting spectacle that was. And not satisfied with that, you decided that Berlusconi had to go. So he was removed and replaced by Mr. Monti, a former European Commissioner, a fellow architect of this Euro disaster and a man who wasn't even a member of the Parliament. It's getting like an Agatha Christie novel where we're trying to sort of work out who's the next person that's going to be bumped off. The difference is we know who the villains are. You should all be held accountable for what you've done. You should all be fired. Now, here's a headline from this week's papers. Eurozone pushes for tougher policing of Greece. A very aggressive act by these banking interests. I mean, they're saying that they're going to start to manage Greece's interests. This is a country. This is a sovereign country. And they had a constitution. And in the constitution, it says quite clearly that if debts can't be paid, the country must default to preserve sovereignty. How did the Troika get the Greek government to agree to the quote-unquote memorandum, which gave the tro Troika, that is to say the IMF, ECB, and EU, powers greater than the country's own constitution. How did that happen? It's a super Soviet type system with an awful lot of rich millionaires and billionaires running the whole show at the top. And at the top, you don't even know who's running it because they won't tell you it's secret. They still call it democratic, though, because the politicians uh, that supposedly represent different countries now, which are now called states or provinces, the politicians can yap a lot and, and grandstand on television and, and laugh at each other, etc. But they can't actually pass any bill themselves or even put any bills forward, never mind annul them. So it, it's a dictatorship of, of a sort. Exactly what is the European Union? Perhaps by examining the Soviet version, we can get the answer. The Soviet Union was governed by 15 unelected people who appointed each other and who were not accountable to anyone. The European Union is governed by two dozen people who appoint each other, meet in secret, and are not accountable to anyone and whom we cannot sack. One might say that the EU has an elected parliament. Well, the Soviet Union had a parliament of a sort too, the Supreme Soviet, which just rubber stamped the Politburo decisions. Pretty much like the European Parliament does, in the EU there are hundreds of thousands of Eurocrats with their huge salaries, their staff, servants, bonuses and privileges, their lifelong immunity from prosecution, which is simply shuffled from one position to another, no matter what they do or fail to do. Is this not? exactly like the Soviet regime. The Soviet Union was created by coercion and very often with a military occupation. The European Union is being created admittedly not by armed force, but by coercion and economic bullying. 
In order to continue to exist, the Soviet Union spread itself further and further. The moment it stopped spreading, it started collapsing. And I suspect the same is true of the European Union. The EU is an old Soviet model presented in Western guise. As the discredited constitution of the collapsed Soviet Union moved inexorably westward, all of its essential elements were incorporated into the constitution of Europe. Not the least of these toxic ingredients was the immunity of the commissars from any obligation to comply with the laws that they inflict upon everyone else. Neither I, nor most of Her Majesty's subjects would dream any longer of voting to remain as members of the European Union as it is today. Directives issued every three hours, day and night, 365 days a year, from behind closed doors by unelected commissars. Those commissars even have, and all too often use, the power to issue commission regulations that have the immediate force of supreme law throughout our continent, regardless of the opinion of any elected parliament. A lavishly toothless talking shop, laughably called a parliament, its members do not even have the power to bring forward a bill. Only the commissars can propose the supreme law of Europe. Overregulation that is as stifling as it is absurd. Whatever is not interdit is obligatoire. Mickey Mouse money that was fabricated not as a currency but as a dismal instrument of political centralization. And as many of us had predicted from the outset, the euro is now doomed to collapse and good riddance. This project was never going to work. People like me said this 10 years ago, that this was always about politics, it was not about economics. The idea that you could have economies in the Mediterranean in line with economies like Germany, fast-growing economies like Germany, was never going to work. The only way to get out of this mess is for those countries to go back onto their national currencies, to devalue, to get growth moving, and, uh, and to get exports going. And at the moment, they can't reduce their debt because their currencies are controlled by Frankfurt, they're controlled by the European Central Bank, they're not controlled by Athens or Lisbon or even Dublin. And what the idea that they will put forward is, is full fiscal union. The people, the mandarins in Brussels, don't see this crisis as a bad thing. What they see it as is an opportunity, an opportunity to create a United States of Europe. And that's what they will push for on Friday. And what that will do, it will give Germany greater control over the economies of the Mediterranean. In fact, I will go as far to say that Germany will have more power over Europe than it's ever had. You may imagine that any comparison between today's European Union and the vicious tyrannies of the past is inappropriate. You may consider that calling the Brussels regime a fascist or communist police state is unduly extreme. If you think these things, let me tell you a story, and when you have heard it, please think again. Two years ago, a British citizen who had set up a business in another EU member state went bankrupt, owing 30,000 euros when his business failed. He returned to the UK with his wife and two children to start again. However, the Hungarian police decided that his business failure had been fraudulent and issued a European arrest warrant for him. At three o'clock in the morning, Britain's equivalent of the KGB, the Serious Organised Crime Agency, created by the last socialist government, kicked in his door, dragged him from his bed and took him to London where without any chance to prepare his case, he was dragged in front of a Supreme Court judge. At no time did the Hungarian police specify any particulars of any offence which they alleged against their victim. 
the procedure for the European arrest warrant did not oblige them to do so. To this day, the accused has not been given any details of what he is thought to have done wrong. The judge said that under the rules he was not allowed to make any inquiries about whether the accused had committed any offence, or what the particulars of the offence were, or whether there was any prima facie evidence against him, or even whether the Hungarian prosecutor was ready to bring him to trial. The judge said that under the EU rules he had no option but to allow rendition of the accused to Hungary. There, for four months, the accused was incarcerated in a filthy jail. Throughout that time, he was fed on nothing but rancid pork fat three times a day. The accused contacted a Conservative member of the European Parliament to ask for help and received this reply. If the Hungarian authorities consider you guilty of a crime, then you are guilty and I will not lift a finger to help you. For very nearly 800 years, it had been the right of any British subject not to be punished or imprisoned except upon due process of law, including the right to know what he is accused of and to answer the charges publicly in court. Not anymore. The right of habeas corpus a fundamental right that Britain exported to many nations is now no longer the free citizen's right in Britain or anywhere else in the European Union. 